Welcome back to the Anderson Bros Outdoors. I'm Jake, and today we have an exciting video planned for you. Let's dive into it. So today we're going to be unboxing and going over this Iwata HPCS airbrush and then also this Ergo compressor. All right, so welcome back everyone. So like I said, we're going to go over this Iwata airbrush. It's an HPCS and then I did have an I did purchase an Airgoo uh, dedicated compressor for it. There's a number of reasons I did that, uh, but we'll get into that when we move on to the compressor. The first thing I want to do is showcase everything I got with the airbrush. So I went to my local Hobby Lobby and purchased this HPCS. It is one of the most recommended airbrushes in the RC community, the Eclipse HPCS. This does have the bonus set. If you go online, the cheapest I could find it online was like 175. However, Hobby Lobby was selling it for $149.99. So I do have some other things here, as you can see. And then I do have the hose. I ended up getting the hose and all of these other parts from Amazon. Links are down in the description below. So what are these other parts? So by default, the HPCS comes with a 0.35 millimeter nozzle. Reading some reviews and some recommendations online, really this is my first foray into spray painting or airbrushing, if you will, painting in general. I wanted to do a little bit of homework before I just went out and willy-nilly bought something and so the consensus that I found was the HPCS was the best airbrush to get and then the recommendation was is that you need to purchase uh, these three pieces to change it from a 0.35 millimeter nozzle to a half a millimeter nozzle. It allows you to spray a lot more and it's a lot less redundant when you're trying to do a body. I would assume that 0.35 millimeter nozzle would be perfect for other hobbies. I grabbed this uh, in this box, you can't really see it, but it is a uh, air goo compressor. Now, the reason I bought a dedicated compressor for this is because I only want to run this compressor when I'm using the airbrush, first of all. Second of all, I got a little bit bigger compressor because I don't want the compressor to be running all the time. I only want it to run to fill the tank. The reason that I don't want to utilize this compressor with this airbrush, or I only want to use this compressor with this airbrush, is that in the summertime, it, it makes it much easier to get rid of the humidity. I don't want any water coming through my air, and so I'll have two or three air to water separators in the summer. I think one is probably perfectly fine. That's the reason I got a dedicated compressor. I think the compressor ran just that $100. Again, links in the description below. I read a bunch of reviews on this. There are a lot of very good reviews, especially with airbrushing, so that is why we've arrived here with these products. The first thing I want to do is I want to unbox these two items, the airbrush and the compressor, and then we're going to hook it all up and try it out. I've been faunching at the bit to do this. I just got the rest of these parts in, so we're going to figure this out together. Let's just dive right in. You can see the airbrush package here. I want to, I don't know if that's how you say it or not. That's how I've been saying it. Probably helps if we cut the tape, huh? If that is not the correct name, Congrats on your genuine Iwata, Iwata. I, I have no idea. I don't know if that I, I is silent. It could just be Wada. I have no idea. Not a single clue. It is taking its sweet time to come out. Box is really tight. And there we go. So we have a nice sticker. Uh, we might put that somewhere. We have some instructions. It's like a really single page instruction manual here. It's nice. One, two, and three looks simple enough. I'm sure we can figure it out. And then I'm going to guess that this is the test, the test strip that they did when they checked this gun and put it in here. I forget what you call it, but uh, it looks like there's potentially a screwdriver that comes with some of these kits. Who knows? Has a nice little tool here. I'm guessing that we're going to need that for something. Let's pull out the actual airbrush. It is nice and shiny. It probably will not be that way for long. There will probably be a bunch of fingerprints on it, which is uh, unfortunate, but it is what it is. It looks like how you do it. I, I assumed that you pressed on this, but you don't actually press. You just pull back, and uh, I'm guessing that it sprays like that. I am left-handed, so oh, it's nice and tight on there. Oh, so this doesn't actually screw in. This is a gravity-fed airbrush, so what that means is the paint goes in here and gravity feeds it to the nozzle. Uh, the reason that this is more desirable over the 
other airbrush where you have the paint container under it and it has like a little straw that goes in it is for a number of reasons but primarily because it's much harder to clean this isn't actually screwed in i thought it was screwed in but it's just like taper fit let's see what else we got over here this was a bonus kit there we are so it looks like we have a pistol grip moisture filter i did not know that that came with that but that's nice to make it it looks like it goes down here on that it did come with some cleaner fast acting and odorless environmentally safe and then we get three colors of paint so I mean, you can probably mix these red and blue would be purple we will be testing with these today and we also got some lubricant followed by the end of the box well, it looks like we got some more paperwork this was a little more what I was thinking the manual would be. It does look like it is 22 pages. So the manual contains, we have the introduction, the airbrush. This is a whole lot of compressor here, so it's gonna be tough to fit it in the video, but we will make it work as we always do. The first thing we notice is we have an operator instructions for airbrush, so we will need to follow that. And then we have the owner's manual or user manual. One of the other things that's in the top of the box is this product defect documentation. And then we have the compressor itself, and that's how that was in that box. So these two pieces were on the side like this. Not a huge fan of how that was shipped. Maybe a little more styrofoam would be better, but I guess if it works, I can't do a whole lot of complaining. Pull it out of here. And now that we're done unboxing, we're gonna move the camera back around. Alrighty, so you can see we have the compressor out of the box. It was not held in very well. It does feel very nice. There are no loose fittings. The mounts are actually pretty nice as well. Nice rubber mounts, so that way when it's running, it's not making a bunch of noise hitting the floor. It has a nice little handle up top, power button. It's got a water filter already built into it. Fitting is a little loose here. That's not a huge deal. We can tighten these up. The real question is, is how well it works for our application. It does look like it is already made for an airbrush. So this airbrush hose will just fit right on here. You don't actually need the adapter that comes with the hose. Once that hose goes on, you can get your handy dandy pistol grip moisture filter that came with your spray gun out. And you can put that in the bottom of your airbrush like such. Screw it in and then you would sc simply screw in the other end of this hose to this and you would paint away. Let's see how loud this compressor gets. All right, there we go. And we have red on the button. Oh, wow. Super, super quiet. This thing is cute. We're gonna have to plug in the airbrush because it doesn't actually want to hold the air. There's no valve. I will be adding one of those here so that way I can turn air hose on and off if I would like. Right out of the gate, I don't see any immediate concerns. I think this thing is super quiet. Can't even hardly tell that it's running. Let's plug all this stuff in. Let's fire it back up. So I do feel it's leaking somewhere. Maybe it's maybe it's the fan in the motor. So we are up to 25 PSI. I don't feel anything else leaking, so that's a positive. Before I continue, documentations here. I don't know what the recommended PSI is for this. I don't want to overdo it. Part two is air sources. It doesn't actually tell you what the recommended PSI is. It just gives you the terminology for what CFM, PSI, or what different measurements of airflow is. At what pressure is the airbrush sprayed? 10 to 20 PSI for skin, 20 to 25 PSI for artwork, and 55 to 65 PSI for t-shirts and automotive painting. And I'm gonna say probably between the 30 and 65 PSI mark is really where you're going to want to spray. I mean, it's so quiet. We're going to spray it at the 50 PSI mark just to test it out. Just like that, it is silent. I wonder how long we can hold this open. Continuous work time is 30 minutes max. Tank is a... Tank capacity is 3 liters. Now that we have some air, we just... Oh, no, you do push down. So let's go ahead and time it. See how long we hold it down until the compressor kicks back on. Ready, set, go. So we are down to 45 PSI. Oh, 
And there we go. We are going to find something to spray. So we're going to spray something on top of this. We're going to spray the box first just to kind of see what it looks like with the 0.35 millimeter. And then we're going to spray the box. Then we're going to spray something on the box. I have no idea what that is yet. And then we're going to swap it out for the 0.5 millimeter nozzle. So stay tuned. Okay, everything is ready to go. Let's mix up this paint. This is Com Art OP Hansa Yellow 0922 MDA. Shake well. It doesn't say if it's good for paper, or plastic, metal, whatever the case is. Well, it looks it looks like it's water based. Doesn't say if it's water based or not. I put a lot in there. I probably should not have put that much. Trial and error here. There. Okay, so I get you now. So if you leave it all the way forward, it doesn't actually work. See? Pull the throttle back to modulate how much you want to give it. So the more you pull the throttle back, the more it's going to give like this big squirt here. So if I pull it all the way back, you can see that it lets out a lot. But if I only pull it back some, it's not as much. The further back you go, the more the paints it will release. When you use it, that lid is on there. I've got this old broken clapped out body here. Let's spray some yellow on it and see what that does. Paints on. Oh, there we go. You really have to let her eat. You got to pull back really far to get any paint out of there. And there will be <coughs> some overspray. Whew. Right here is full trigger. Let's go halfway. So halfway. And that's what it looks like. And then all the way. That's what it looks like. Just for reference there, it's actually is pretty cool. You can tell that this paint is probably not for plastic. I have no idea what it's for. It's not going to work very good. Not to mention this body is extremely dirty and it is nowhere near ready for any kind of paint. Just note that. All right, so I've just moved the compressor to the floor. I've undone the hose. I've turned the compressor off. I am going to try and pour what's left of this paint. See, there's actually uh, not much left. Try and pour it back into the can here. I don't know if that's acceptable or not. Feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you do with your excess paint. Really not much. I just don't want it to go everywhere. I can definitely see us building like a little paint booth slash whatever to, to do this in because I can see how there is going to be overspray everywhere. I'm not going to really clean this out very well at this time. We're going to end up putting more yellow paint in. The parts you need to interchange for the half a millimeter unit in the description below. There's three of them. All right, so we will start, I guess, not a clue. So it looks like... Let that be a lesson to you all. If you're changing the nozzles, clean the gun before you change. Screw back on your pistol grip air cleaner. We're going to plug it back into the compressor and turn the compressor back on. Don't have a ton of experience with airbrushes. My assumption here is that the lower PSI, the more controllable it is. I don't know. I guess we'll figure that out as we use it. We'll get our box back out here. It actually looks pretty decent on there. We're going to try this side with the half millimeter nozzle. Put some more paint in there. Keep in mind, this is probably not adequate painting conditions. It is kind of chilly today. There is no fire. It's not warm enough in my mind to paint. We've got the paint in there. We've got the cap on. We'll go medium first on the box. Oh, that's quite a bit more. Then we'll do medium on the truck. And then uh, let's go three quarters on the truck. Uh, let's go three quarters on the box. So it's really about half. I like how you can modulate it as you're using it. So you could add a little more if you wanted. Like right there, we're adding a little more. And then removing it if you would like to do that as well. 
definitely overspray everywhere. Shut the air compressor off. Now that this is all cleaned out, unless you have a valve to shut the air off out of the compressor, it's gonna, you're gonna have to turn it off and let all the air out of the tank. I will be acquiring a valve for that, for this size, and I will update everyone. Pull this compressor up here and take a look and see. I don't see any moisture in there. No moisture in there right now, so we're good to go. Pretty happy with the air compressor. I don't wanna make this video super long. So overall, you saw the performance of the stock 0.35 millimeter nozzle and then also the half a millimeter nozzle. I don't know that there's a huge, huge difference. You could probably get away with the 0.35 instead of spending the extra i think 40 or 50 bucks on the stuff to convert it over to half a millimeter if you're doing a lot of spraying you're going to probably want to use the half a millimeter i think all said and done i i came in right around 300 dollars for the airbrush the compressor and everything else some of the additional things that i got that weren't included in that price are a pro line kit i guess i'll see really soon how well the pro line performs and i also got a bunch of Priatex paint like this candy apple green probably need to be shook up really well before use because you can see all the flakes in the bottom i also got a Priatex kit just like this same colors so i have enough paint for a while the next video i want to do painting is I want to paint the 18th scale late model car. I don't know how well it's going to hold the paint because I've actually used it quite a bit with the body being the way it is, but I'm pretty sure if I clean it up real good on the inside that the paint will stick just fine. Very happy with everything that I've received. It is a little too cold to actually paint anything for real today. I will have to start the stove for that and make sure that it's nice and warm in here so the paint sticks very well and doesn't run or have any issues like that. I guess this isn't really a review of a body, but the air compressor is super quiet for what it is. It's not very loud. I don't have a decibel tester or I would test it. And then the actual gun itself, I can see why it has such high reviews. However, being new to this, you know, there, there might be something better out there for the money. If you do purchase from Amazon, the links in Amazon below, that does help with the channel. The goal of the channel is to utilize the income from the channel for the channel and then give everything else away. We will do another video very soon. I probably won't do the whole paint start to finish. I'll show the, the paint that I used, the settings that I used, the airbrush and the compressor on, things of that nature. And then I'll show the final product. I would also like to do some hard bodies as well as Lexan. We've got a lot of things that we're going to do in the future, so stay tuned and we'll see you next time.